Glaucoma is a very mysterious disease with a myriad of risk factors, some of which we're probably not even aware of at this point. The risk factor that gets the most publicity is intraocular pressure. Now, intraocular pressure is the pressure of the fluid within our eyes, and it tends to be relatively independent of our blood pressure, which is the pressure within our blood vessels. For a long time, we thought, or we in fact defined glaucoma based on intraocular pressure alone. Now we know that the vast majority of patients with pressures over 21, which is what we called ocular hypertension or high intraocular pressure previously, do not go on to develop glaucoma. Also, we know that people with pressures under 21 can also develop glaucoma. There are many other important risk factors, one being age. As a patient gets older and older, the risk for glaucoma does increase. Family history. If you have a parent or especially a sibling who has glaucoma, then your risk of glaucoma also increases. Thickness of your cornea. This is thought to reflect certain properties of your eyes, which may put you at higher risk for the disease. Your performance on a visual field test, as well as the appearance of your nerve. Of course, these are parts of the definitions of the disease, and so they are intuitive risk factors. An additional risk factor for glaucoma is race. Large epidemiological studies have revealed that African Americans, as well as Hispanic patients, are more likely to develop glaucoma of the open angle variety, whereas Asian patients are more likely to develop angle closure glaucoma. Another thing that I always pay attention to in glaucoma patients is their blood pressure because actually having blood pressure that's too low or having hypertension that's overtreated can be detrimental to glaucoma because it actually lowers the blood flow getting to the optic nerve and nourishing the optic nerve which has been shown to be um, damaging to the optic nerve so that's another important element that we consider in a patient's overall lifestyle. If you know that you have any of these risk factors, it's probably worthwhile to schedule a visit with a glaucoma specialist. Glaucoma is sometimes referred to as the silent thief of sight because early in its course, it affects parts of our vision that we don't use very often. That's why we have specialized testing like the visual field test that allows us to detect any changes in the peripheral vision. As we do more research, we learn more and more about different risk factors for the disease, but these are the primary ones that we evaluate in the clinic. So the key to prevention in glaucoma is really regular eye exams, um, and our ability to detect glaucoma has really improved with technological advancements. Um, in our regular eye exams, what we do is we do visual field testing to check your peripheral vision. Uh, we do disc photos, uh, just photos of the optic nerve serially over time, and watching that over, over years can allow us to detect changes. And also we do OCT testing. OCT is optical coherence tomography, and it allows us to measure the thickness of the optic nerve down to the micron level. And following that over time can really help us to detect changes at a very early stage. And most recently, a lot of centers are now using OCT angiography to really detect glaucoma changes at a very early stage. So fortunately these days, we have a lot of excellent treatment options. Treatment in glaucoma is typically centered around lowering of intraocular pressure, as intraocular pressure is the only modifiable risk factor for developing glaucoma or for the progression of glaucoma. In the treatment of glaucoma, we typically start with intraocular pressure lowering eye drops. Now, some people cannot tolerate eye drops due to their myriad of side effects. And so for these patients, we recommend other forms of treatment. These typically start with laser, either laser applied inside of the eye or on the outside of the eye. And then the next step would be to perform some sort of minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. Now, there has been a lot of innovation in glaucoma surgery recently, and these minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries, while not as effective as traditional type glaucoma surgeries, have a much lower risk profile. And finally, we have more traditional type glaucoma surgeries that we offer, such as trabeculectomies and glaucoma drainage devices, all targeted at lowering intraocular pressure. 
So this is an exciting time in the glaucoma world because we've had a lot of treatment options that have recently become available and a few more on the horizon which will really help our glaucoma patients. Um, just in, at the end of 2017, we had two new glaucoma medications that were FDA approved that were in a new class of medications and that was actually the first time uh, since the 1990s that we'd had a new class of medications available for our glaucoma patients. So this has really helped us you know, provide another option for our patients who need more pressure reduction. Um, also, the minimally invasive glaucoma surgery options have really expanded in the last few years, uh, which have really helped our patients. And coming up in the horizon, we actually have um, sustained release medications for our patients. So sustained release medications will allow our patients to go a, an extended period of time without needing to take additional eye drops. Our glaucoma patients often have to take eye drops many times a day and if they forget their eye pressure is actually fluctuating a lot and that fluctuation can be damaging to the optic nerve. So this is really going to help our patients to keep their glaucoma nice and stable. So I'm really excited about that. We also have research that is developing new devices, surgical devices, that will help surgeons lower pressure in patients' eyes while lowering the risk profile of surgery as well. Finally, there's a lot of research that is being directed toward preventing glaucoma. Some of this research is looking at neuroprotective agents or medicines that might make the nerve more resilient and less likely to be damaged by the risk factors that lead to glaucoma. In addition, we're also looking for ways to regenerate the optic nerve and restore the connections that are severed by the disease process in glaucoma that connect the eyes to the brain. And so we can really individualize treatment for, for patients um, depending on their specific uh, clinical situation and lifestyle.